now we are going to study about bone marrow already i told what is bone marrow the large bones are having cavities in the cavities some soft tissue is a present it is called the bone marrow the bone marrow is a playing important role in the production of blood cells so we are going to see the bone marrow contains stem cells we have to know what is the meaning of stem cells it is the latest terminology which is used in biotechnology and also in the medical science stem cells stem cells are some undifferentiated cells very very basic and common cells they can be changed into any other type of cells in the bone marrow so they are called as stem cells they can be changed into rbc they can be changed into wbc they can be differentiated into platelets so the basic cells we can call as a stem cells they are also called a hematopoietic cells what is the meaning of hematopoietic hemato means blood cells rbc wbc and platelet poietic means production the production of blood cells that is called a hematopoietic cells so the bone marrow contains stem cells called the hematopoietic cells which can divide these cells can the stem cells can divide they can grow they can multiply keep on increasing in number by cell division but once they are changed into rbc or wbc or platelets they cannot multiply okay then the next point some cells remain as hematopoietic for example we will take at the beginning in the bone marrow 100 uh, stem cells are there now the 100 cells are keep on multiplying into 200 400 800 1000 that is uh, 1600 like that keep on multiplying but what will happen out of so many cells more than 1000 cells 100 cells remain as a hematopoietic stem cells they will remain as a stem cells but the remaining cells what are there they are completely changed into rbc wbc and platelets so some cells remain as a hematopoietic and the other cells are differentiated into rbc wbc and platelets why the cells are present as a stem cells because in future they have to produce rbc wbc platelets so they have to be present basic amount so some cells remain as a hematopoietic others are differentiated into three types of blood cells some lymphocytes now once again we are coming to the term lymphocytes what is the meaning of lymphocytes one type of white blood cell wbc some lymphocytes mature in the bone marrow they are maturing in the bone marrow in the later part of the topic we are going to study so they are called b cells they are also called b cells b stands for bone marrow so they are matured in the bone marrow so they are called b cells or b lymphocytes and sent to the blood okay what is the structure of one lymphocyte you have to see lymphocyte is a white blood cell i told it is like amoeba it is having irregular shape it is having a large nucleus in the center large nucleus occupying 90% of the portion the nucleus is very large large nucleus the cytoplasm is a present uh, at the peripheral region very thin layer of cytoplasm will be present that is the characteristic feature of lymphocyte any white blood cell which is having large nucleus near the center it is called a lymphocyte this is only the diagrammatic representation now we are going to study about the uh, next uh, secondary organ peripheral or secondary lymphoid organs peripheral or secondary lymphoid organs now in the peripheral i already told they are not playing vital role but they are supporting the immune system in that first one lymph node or lymph glands we are going to study lymph node or lymph glands actually this is a lymphatic vessel one small lymphatic vessel it is having bulging portions again the vessel will be there again bulging portion like that like a chain it will be going on so this is called a lymphatic system now the bulging portions are called the lymph nodes or lymph glands now we are going to take one lymph node or one lymph gland now this is a large one we are taking section and we are enlarging now this is one vessel which is going down now this is the one now this is the gland what you have taken and a small small lymph vessels are joining with that they are coming one vessel here one here one like that they are coming and joining these are all the small lymph vessels which are coming and joining to the lymph gland 
So if you take the overall lymph gland internally, it is a divided into three regions. Now the outer region, completely outer if you take it. Now this uh, light color region, you can see that this full light color region is called a cortex. Now this region is called a cortex. Now starting from here, don't think that it is only this part. Starting from here, it is cortex. Then you can see dark violet color region. But it won't be violet color, only for diagrammatic representation they have given color. Now this wide region present near the center is a called a paracortex. It is called a paracortex. And here near the center bottom, here one small region is there, it is called a medulla. It is called a medulla. It is called a medullary or medulla region. So these are the three regions are present. Now we have to take this outer region. The outer region is a... Next question. Now the structure explanation, keep that diagram in your mind and we will come to this. The structure, normally the lymph gland or lymph node is bean shaped structure. And it is the first one to counter the antigen, first one try to attack the microorganism. Now three zones are present in the, that is a gland, cortex, paracortex and medulla, just before we have studied. Cortex is filled tightly, tightly packed with the B lymphocytes. What is the meaning of B lymphocytes? The lymphocytes which are maturing in the bone marrow just before we have studied. They are called the B lymphocytes, comma, macrophages, another type of uh, lymphocytes, macrophages and follicular dendritic cells. So the cortex is filled with the three types of cells, all are lymphocytes, B lymphocytes, macrophages and follicular dendritic cells. Why we are calling them as a dendritic? Now the cell, dendritic cell is giving appearance like now cell. Now cells are having some outer projections. They are called dendrons. Like that here also the cell is having small small outer projections giving appearance like dendrons of now cell. So we are calling them as a dendritic cells. Paracortex, we have studied about paracortex, the next the dark color region. Paracortex is a filled with T lymphocytes. Here B lymphocytes, here T lymphocytes are present. What are T lymphocytes? They are the lymphocytes maturing in the thymus gland. T lymphocytes, shortly called the T cells and interdigitating dendritic cells. Now another type of dendritic cells, interdigitating dendritic cells. Now these are the various types of cells occupying this paracortex. Now medulla. Medulla is a small region found at the bottom I told. Medulla is a loosely filled with, that means cells are not closely packed, they are scattered here and there, loosely filled with lymphocytes which multiply into plasma cells. Ordinary lymphocytes will be there, they are multiplying into plasma cells to produce antibody, they can produce antibody. Now these are the three different type of cells, groups of cells present at different different places. Now, hundreds of lymph nodes are connected by lymph vessels. Just before I have drawn the diagram, one small portion, only two uh, lymph nodes are there. But hundreds of lymph nodes will be there. They are all connected by narrow tubes. That is a lymphatic system. Colorless fluid called lymph. Colorless extracellular fluid. Any fluid which is passing through some tube is called an extracellular fluid called a lymph is percolating through the nodes percolating gradually they are moving in between the cells that is called a percolation if anything is moving in between the cells or in between the structures fine gap and all that is called a percolation percolating through the nodes at that time the pathogens are there in the lymph imagine like this already pathogens some bacteria some viruses are there the pathogens are filtered by the phagocytic cells either they are present in the cortex or in the paracortex or in the medulla. What are the phagocytic cells are there? They are engulfing the microorganisms in the nodes. Then sometimes the lymph glands swell up in the neck, armpits and in the groin regions. Sometimes the glands will be swollen. Sometimes the infection is so severe. The glands will be active in doing that. At the time the gland will be swollen. So sometimes the lymph glands swell up in the neck armpit and groin region due to the accumulation of active lymphocytes. The lymphocytes are very active. Whether they are B cells or T cells or whatever it is, they are very active. They are filled with, that means enormous number they are produced. It is the signal of severe infection. 
so in the infection is very very severe suppose the glands are swollen here in the neck and all it is meaning that infection is severe infection now this one simple diagrammatic representation this is the lymph gland now here all the three regions are there cortex paracortex and medulla now just simply i am putting there some region it is like a filter that means all the uh, lymphocytes are present here okay t cells b cells all are there macrophages everything now the lymph is passing through this in this direction along with that pathogens are entering now the lymph is percolating here flowing here wherever the fine gap is there it is entering and finally the lymph is coming out when the lymph is coming out only lymph is coming out but what happened to the pathogens all the pathogens are trapped by the phagocytic cells so here only lymph will be there no microorganism but some cells are producing antibody t cells are producing antibody so along with the lymph antibody will be there now the antibody is our body chemical so in future if any microorganisms enter the antibody can destroy them so here in this region pathogens are trapped now this is one simple explanation for the role of lymph node now we are going to study about cells of immune system so in the immune system what are the various types of cells which are playing important role we have to say the cellular composition of adult human blood in the adults now what are the various types of uh, cells are playing important role they are present in the blood only we have to see that red blood cells but they are not playing much role but only for blood group they are playing important role now red blood cells how many numbers should be there in our body we have to see it should be that is 4.2 million that is 42 lakhs to 65 lakh cells will be present 42 to 65 lakhs of cells that white blood cells we are going to see now in the white blood cells totally five types of cells i told you in that first group is called the granulocytes sorry a granulocytes now a granulocytes is having two type of wbc okay now the first one is lymphocytes this only playing very very important role in uh, immunity lymphocytes just now we have studied about macrophages t lymphocytes b lymphocytes ordinary lymphocytes like, like that now there are about 5500 to 4000 cells per cubic millimeter of blood which forms 20 to 30 percent of wbc not overall blood cells wbc suppose if 100 wbc's are there in that 20 to 30 will be lymphocytes okay it is a greater percentage monocytes another type of a wbc that is granulocytes a granulocytes monocytes 200 to 950 okay the percentage will be 200 to 900 number per cubic millimeter which is 2 to 7 percent of the total number of uh, wbc then the second group is called the granulocytes a granulocytes two types over now granulocytes three types are there we will take first type of a granulocytes neutrophils 2000 to 7000 cells are present 2000 to 7000 cells now it is forming 50 to 70 percent of the total number of wbc basophils we are going to see the basophils are forming 50 to 100 very very less number it is less than one percent in the total number of wbc eosinophils actually spelling if you take eosinophils but we have to pronounce it as eosinophils eosinophils will be 40 to 500 okay 40 to 500 now the percentage is 2 to 5 percent but all these things are one way or the other helping us to destroy the microorganism so these are all the cellular compositions in adult human blood